Okay, hello everyone, Victor Mama from Excel Moments with the continuation of the solution series to Excel BI's LinkedIn challenges. And like I've said in previous videos, if you are not following the Excel BI LinkedIn page, you should if you want to boost your Excel formula game. This is challenge 667. So let's look at the data set and the problem statement. In terms of the data set, you basically have two columns of data, right? Dates and the sales on those dates and the problem statement is as succinct as you could ever find pivot the data as shown <laughs> okay <laughs> so here if you look at the result you can see that you have you know the months listed down this way you know using three characters for the months and you have the days listed this way you know three characters and at the intersection what it does is if it's one value just list that if it's more than one it separates them you know based on a comma space okay so it doesn't add them like a typical pivot paid table that you do maybe a sum a mean max you know here it's listing everything that's the beautiful thing you know about maybe the new functions versus the pivot table okay at least to my mind so that's what we need to set up and let's go to this solution sheet nothing special in the solution sheet aside the fact that i just want to have another sheet for this okay so he's giving us a hint already which is that we need to pivot the data so basically in a formula context i'm going to use a pivot by which is the equivalent you know of using a pivot table in a formula context okay so i'm just going to do pivot by right now for my row fields ideally i could just give it all the dates right but if i give it all the dates what it's going to do is it's going to list all the dates or if i choose to group it by you know months or something it will do that but now you can see that the dates are listed as what the month names so this is the beautiful thing about like the pivot by and the group by you don't need to create another column you know with that in your data set to be able to use it in the pivot by you know you can just create that on the fly so what i'm going to do is that instead of having my row fields and pointing you know just straight to the dates i will transform those dates within the pivot by function by using you know the text function okay so text you know take the dates and then return you know them as three alphabets okay so now let's see what this is right this is going to give you a lot of you know J and F E B and the rest and the rest. But the beautiful thing is that when you put it inside a, a pivot by, you know, it's gonna give you a unique list. Okay, so you don't need to bother about that. So it's gonna strip out all the duplicates and you're left with the unique list. Okay, so that's that one. Now on the other side, which is now the column field, which is what goes from left to right, we just need to have what as in the weekdays. Okay, so we can use the same function. It's really also a text function. But this time, instead of using MMM, we'll be using, you know, DDD, okay? Right, which just does the day equivalent. Now, values, which is what we are going to maybe aggregate in some way. We know that that's the sales, right? Now, then the next thing is, okay, what kind of aggregation are you doing? Right, it's not a sum, it's not an average. From, you know, the problem sheet, you already know what this is. This is listing every value that meets that criteria and then separating them by a comma space, which basically is an array to text. That's what array to text does. So you don't need to think too hard about that. Let's close the brackets. Let's see what we have. Okay, so at least we have something that remotely looks like it. We can start to clean it up, you know, to make it, uh, you know, make more sense. So a few things to do. We need to get rid of, you know, the total, you know row and the total column at least those two should get us closer all right so now in field headers i can say oh no no field headers maybe i don't want that you know row total depth no uh column total depth no okay so let's see all right so good so now we have you know something that looks very close to we know what we're expecting there's only one thing that is off which is the fact that it's not sorted in the same order this is sorted alphabetically yeah that's what the pivot is going to do right you know so because they are text it starts with the month that is first alphabetically which is april then august but you want it to go in chronological order which is you want it to start with january february march and you want this to also start with monday tuesday wednesday thursday Okay, so if this were like numeric fields, you know, it would be easy to fix because we could use, you know, if you look into the arguments, you see that you have row sort order, you know, column sort order. You could use that, you know, to decide the order. But whether you, you know, sort this ascending or descending doesn't help you in any way. It's just going to flip what you are seeing. 
okay so you need to find a way to introduce something that would help you you know to get the sort right now the easiest way to do it on the month side is if you can introduce the month numbers you know the month numbers if they go from one two three four five and that's what it is being sorted on this would automatically be sorted so what i'm going to do is i'm going to introduce you know two columns which i will call use and dump columns so i'm going to use them and i'm going to dump them okay but they will help me to get what i need to get done done right so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to introduce an h stack you know which is how you know you kind of bring maybe say two fields into either you know your row fields or your column fields okay and the first thing i'm going to do here is i'm going to say month which is just going to get the month numbers for all these guys okay so this is going to give me numbers you know like one two three to twelve right but in my case maybe nine because that's where it stops and then i'm going to close that so it means that for my column fields or row fields in this case i'm going to have you know two fields i'm going to have the month numbers and then i'm going to have the months as three alphabets see what i get okay so you can see that by introducing you know the month numbers and since this is what is being sorted you know based on you know automatically this helps you know to sort um you know the months in the order that you want so we're going to use a similar trick you know on this side to to sort um you know the weekdays okay so i would introduce also here you know i could use an h stack there's one other nifty way you could do it but let's use the h stack first Okay, and then I can use the weekday function. You know, the weekday would give me the days of the week as one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Okay, so I'm going to select this. I like having Monday as day one. So for that reason, I'm going to use two as my second argument, not because there's anything special. I just like that. Okay, it's just a personal preference. Okay, so close. So what I'm doing here is I'm introducing, you know, the day of the week. So if it's Monday, it's a one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So it's the same trick. Okay, so. Now you see that with those two, you know, introductions, I now have it sorted, you know, by month and I have it sorted also, um, you know, by the day of the week. So now those two columns have served their purpose. What I need to do is to then dump them, which is drop. Okay. So I'm going to use the drop function, you know. Excel is acting very funny. It's not giving my intelligence. You may have noticed that. Okay, so I'm going to drop the first row because I don't need the first row and I'm going to drop, you know, the first column as well. Okay, so close the bracket and then, you know, and if you compare this to this, we basically have everything right. I guess the only difference would be the top left, which is not the greatest thing that you want to do. Okay, so every other thing is true. And, you know, that's how you get it done. So, um, it's not the hardest. The only challenge there, I guess, was, you know, getting the sort order to work. If there were numbers, then it would be easy to either sort ascending or descending. But because, you know, there were characters that needed to be sorted in an order other than ascending and descending, I had to introduce, you know, those two um you know i'll call them helper columns <laughs> okay i guess that's the way to look at them so but they are use and dump columns basically so use them to get what you want and then you dump them so that's all i intended to share in this video i hope you know you enjoyed it and you learned you know a thing or two if you did please hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel excel moments for now i'm out of here